Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, uh, David Tear, and today I'm going to talk about uh, something called the logistic map. And this is uh, uh, an important uh, topic in math. It's very closely related to chaos theory and also fractals. And as you'll see, there's a very close relationship between the logistic map and the Mandelbrot set, which I talked about uh, in a previous video. Um, so here's the logistic map. I, I wrote down the equation at the bottom of this slide. Xn plus 1 is Rxn times 1 minus Xn. That might look like a lot, uh, but it's really not that complicated. R turns out to be a real number between 0 and 4. And X, uh, the, this is, the Xn is just a sequence of, uh, of real numbers. Uh, you could start with X0 any value you want, uh, strictly between 0 and 1. It's usually good to start with uh, 0 0.5 and a half. So let's see what happens to this map. So here's some examples. And uh, this is what happens for different values of R. Um, so if you look at the top left graph, uh, I think they do three values of R here. Uh, that might be a little hard to see, but uh, the, the red line, I believe, is R equals 0 0.25. Uh, the green is R is equals 0 0.5, and the blue is R equals 0 0.75. So you see it has different behavior, slightly different behavior for different values of R, and we're starting these all at R equals uh, 0.6, I believe. Uh, so uh, this is like an exponential decay. If you're just looking at the top left graph, uh, it eventually goes to zero. And uh, the smaller R is, the faster it goes to zero. Let me show you this again. Uh, and um, so it's basically an exponential decay down to, R, to, to Rn equals, or uh, Xn goes to zero as n gets large. But then something different happens if you let R get bigger. If you look at the second uh, top graph, you'll notice uh, something interesting happens when R is 1. Uh, I guess red is R equals 0, 0 0.75 again. But then when R is 1, you actually, it's constant. And... If R is greater than 1, it's not constant anymore, but it oscillates. Notice, notice that uh, the blue graph, uh, you have these uh, points that are kind of going up and down, and they do approach a fixed value, but it oscillates to that fixed value. And then if you can keep increasing R, you get different kind of behavior. Uh, it's still, notice in the top right, it's still approaching a fixed value, not zero necessarily, but a fixed, a fixed positive value of R. In the third graph, uh, the middle left, notice that it's oscillating. This is, I think, R equals one point. Um, I forget what value of R. I can't really read that. But when R is greater than three, that's what it does. It, I think around 3.2, it, it had, goes into period two. And then you increase uh, R a little bit more, like 3.5. It goes into period four. This is what's known as bifurcation. So the period doubles. And then you get into the chaotic region. If you look at this graph on the bottom, this is when R is, I think, something like 3.9 or 3.99. When R gets close to 4, it no longer even is periodic. It's what we call chaotic. It becomes almost impossible to predict what's going to happen to the sequence. Uh, that's what we call chaos, when we get basically random behavior um, uh, resulting from, from order. You know, And it's kind of like the Mandelbrot set, as I was talking about in a previous video. So, um, and actually, this is, okay, um, I have to go back again. This is uh, what's known as a bifurcation diagram. So I was just telling you how when you change the value of R, it changes the behavior of what's going on. So I said when R was less than three, you get a, a single fixed point, and you can see this in this little branch on the left. It approaches a single value of Xn as it, and gets large. Um, that value of n gets larger, but then eventually at r equals 3, it splits up into two values. So now it's oscillating. It's oscillating between the top value and the bottom value when r is between 3 and about 3.4, I think, 3.45. And then you increase r a little bit more, and now you're going to get four values. That's another bifurcation. You increase a little bit more, you'll get 8, 16, 32, so on until you get to about r equals 3.57, and then uh, past r equals 3.57 all the way to r equals 4, you get uh, basically you're in the chaotic region of chaos. But there's even islands of stability within this chaos. If you look at these 
kind of um, you know uh, uh, white um, windows in the chaotic region. Uh, you actually have a window where you have period three, and then you have a win you know, and then you're going to get a bifurcation from three to six to twelve, so on. There's also there's a region where you start with a uh, five, ten, twenty. So you can get bifur other bifurcations, but most of this region is just chaotic. You can't predict what's going to happen there. So how can we make a little bit of sense or order out of this chaos? Well, there was a very uh, a important mathematician in the 1970s named uh, Mitchell Feigenbaum. He did exactly that. So what he did was he looked at these bifurcation points, which are in the left column. Uh, these are the values of mu, mu1 equals 3. And, you know, I explained earlier that, um, I'm going to go back again. Um, with uh, when r is three, that's when you get the first bifurcation. So the first bifurcation occurs when when uh, I guess he calls it mu one here. It's just the value of r where you get the first bifurcation. So the first bifurcation is three. That's when you get period two. Second bifurcation is three point four four nine. So on. Uh, that's an exact value you can calculate. Uh, I think it's just a quadratic number. It's pretty easy to calculate. That's when you get period four. And then you get another number a little bit bigger when uh, you get period 8, period 16, and so on. These are all the bifurcations. But notice that if you look at the numbers in the left column, they do approach a, a, a constant. They approach a fixed value, uh, which is about 3.57 or 3.5699. And what, what another thing that, that Feigenbaum did, um, he actually, uh, if, you, if you take the limit, so here's, here's what you have to do. Uh, you, you you take the ratios like uh, if you look at uh, uh, the ratio of uh, the second bifurcation, the difference between the second bifurcation value and the first, uh, I guess that would be 0.449, so on, 3.449 minus 3. And then you take the third value minus the second, that gives you another uh, another um, uh, number. And you take the ratio of those two numbers and you get a number that's about 4.669. You keep calculating those ratios, they get closer and closer to this constant known as uh, the Feigenbaum constant. He discovered this constant in 1976, and it turns out to be a very important mathematical constant, kind of like pi. Uh, it's, it's an important number in math and chaos theory, and uh, it just arises from studying, uh, you know, he got it from studying the logistic equation, but you don't even need the logistic equation. It, it turns out that this is kind of a universal phenomenon. It doesn't just uh, it doesn't just happen for the logistic equation, which is shown on the bottom of this picture. That's the bifurcation diagram you get for the logistic equation. But notice you get exactly the same points for the Mandelbrot set. As a matter of fact, you can think of the Mandelbrot set as kind of like a, a two dimensional analog of the logistic equation, uh, where where the numbers have become complex instead of real. So, and it's not just the Mandelbrot set either. I mean, you know, there, there's several, there's the multiple, I think even infinitely many examples of chaotic uh, um, equations that give rise to the same constant, the Mandelbrot, I mean, the, the Feigenbaum constant, 4.669, two approximately. So that is a universal constant. It's a very important number in, uh, in chaos theory. And I think that's where I'll stop. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.